um, you posed the question as we are wrapping up, like, where, what do you see happening? Like in the moment right now, what do you see happening? And I initially, like, I, I loved the question. Um, I'm not good with reacting on the fly. So I froze up like Mitch McConnell and <laughs> oh, didn't know oh what to my. do. Like um, accurate, but damn. Bro, like just straight up, you know, like having a stroke, you know, Ooh. but I, um, so. We I, wish good health upon <laughs> everyone. We wish good health upon everyone. <laughs> you might, I don't. Uh, but so, uh, so I, uh, I said Oregon. And, oh my God. Um, when I said Oregon, dude, like I, I didn't want to say it. It just kind of like pulled out, you know, and, and that might be a bad reference there, but uh, Oregon just came out and I would love to see the Ducks in the Big 12. I just realistically don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, and I, I, there's multiple reasons, right? Like they've never had any interest. Um, I think the Big Ten is really where them and Washington would like to be. And the Big Ten has, has handled this um, pretty much seamlessly. Like we're going to wait, see what happens. We don't want to be the ones who puts the end to the Pac-12. Brett Yormark has no problem. We'll let the Big 12 kill it. And then we'll kind of pick up the scraps. And when Levi and I were talking the other day on Friday, I believe, he brought up the good point of, egos, right? Like yeah. I, right now, when you look at the big 12, even with the addition of Colorado coming in, I think you have all this, the same like-minded um, as a whole with the cohesion of the group where you don't have an alpha, right? Like everybody's on the same page. I know that's been the concerns of bringing in Utah. Uh, well, and, which I think that would be great. Dude. If you put Utah in the big 12, that's automatically them and BYU are the best rivalry period. I, honestly, I think the only problem with Utah is like the fans. Yeah, but I mean him. like dude, at that point, like who yeah, cares that, about the fans? Like let's get the product. Who but. cares about the fans, man? If one thing <laughs> is clear about all of realignment from the start, it's it's honestly who cares about the fans? No, that's a good point, dude, but like like I, I feel really bad for Pac-12 fans in general. Like, you know, we said it at length. I, I like the Pac. I, I think there's some it's, so it sucks for them. Uh, you're more so the Big 12 fan. I know uh, as as somebody who went to Baylor, you when when the Big Twelve was on the brink, y'all y'all, how did you feel initially with that? Like, is, do you feel like the pack? I mean, I think Baylor fans in general felt kind of like these Oregon State fans per se. Yeah, I would say I felt pretty bad, but there was also something in me that felt like we'll survive this. We'll, right. we'll find a landing spot, maybe not a power five landing spot, probably not a power five landing spot. Yeah. I think is what I got to at the, at the darkest moments, but there, there was just something that felt like, look, this isn't at the end. This isn't the end of college football for my, my university. Right. This isn't the end and for my alma mater, but it was, it was scary. You know, you, you don't necessarily want to have to adjust to life in that second tier. Yeah. Um, you don't, you don't want to not, be playing the schools you're used to playing. And like, it's one thing to lose, lose the two that you knew you were losing, but then to think like, Hey, half of the teams that are left might get landing spots in these other bigger, better conferences. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. I, I have been fully convinced this whole time. Like big 12 football is just more fun than a lot of oh, other it's conferences definitely more fun. before. And now after I think it's more fun. And I like, I have a big 10 school. My parents both went to Purdue. I, I watch plenty of Purdue games every year. I enjoy it. But my God, there's something about Big Ten football that just puts me to sleep. And the idea that a conference that has football that puts me to sleep mm -hmm. would survive over the conference that, like, it's crazy, it's hectic, it's fun, right. that gets Gus Johnson yelling like Gus Johnson <laughs> yells. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Like, I think that's probably what, what had me most down in the dumps. And so back to the Pac-12, it's just like I don't envy the fans that care right. a hell of a lot about the football and enjoy their conference and enjoy hopefully going to a lot of games, being able to go up and down the coast, going throughout the conference, and like traveling with their team, yeah. the losing the regionality, losing the rivals they've had. It sucks. I'm not sitting over here. I'm not going to be one of those people dancing on the grave. Am I happy that we finally got to leave the holding pattern and something happened? Right. Yes, absolutely. But if the Pac-12 dies, it's not something I'm going to like be really happy about. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure there there are administrations and other individual figures where I'm like, okay, you're being toxic and annoying about this. There's some Utah right. fans that are really toxic and annoying about the realignment. Um, there's some journalists journalists who have been very frankly toxic about realignment right. and trying to dictate what the truth really is, even though it's not the truth. Um, but <laughs> But yeah, it's going to be sad if the Pac-12 dies. Well, I'm I'm glad you brought up the journalists there because 
you know, I think one of the the journalists from the PAC perspective who has caught a lot of hell in this is Stuart Mandel. And I think he's done a good job of trying to be unbiased. I think at times um, maybe he's gotten caught up in – I don't know if it's necessarily sentimental, but I think he's in a situation where he doesn't want to see the pack die as well. So he was trying to paint with a broad brush the best case scenario. And he caught a lot of hell for that, especially once Colorado did, you know, come to the Big 12. But we were able to have Stewart on the show on Friday on 365 Sports in the afternoon. Go back on YouTube and check that interview out. It was phenomenal. But he addressed it. I mean, he was he put out the article saying he was wrong in the athletic. You can go check that out. Uh, but one interesting quote that he gave us on Friday that really resonated with me was, I feel like the Pac-12 is almost doing everything that the Big 12 did in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I I, I, I don't want to, like, credit myself. I'm pretty sure I said that at one point on one of our episodes. I'm pretty sure. but it, it, I, I, I'm sure a lot of other people have said it as well. Yeah. No, it's just really, it, it's crazy. And um, when we were talking with him, he was talking about the negotiation process um, and how the PAC is handling this. And one thing he brought up that, to me, if I'm a PAC fan or just anybody in general is an area of concern is, while these negotiations are going on with the TV networks, it's George Klyavkov and nobody else. Like, I don't understand how you, in a situation this dire um, when you see that everything is going against you and every move you have made up to this point is seems to be a failure how as the presidents and the chancellors the regents you know I know everybody that's really pulling the strings how are you still comfortable with letting this guy go in single-handedly and relying on his word when at the, to this point he's just been he's missed consistently yeah I after Colorado left, I've started operating under this assumption that there is that essentially, for lack of a better term, the entire Pac-12 is now acting like ducks. And by that, you know the old saying, like ducks, they look very yep. calm on the surface, but underneath Pan. the surface, just <laughs> those, those webbed flippers or yeah. feet, whatever you want to whatever they're actually called. I'm sorry. It's a little early in the morning for me, but it's <laughs> chaos down there. It's chaos. Yes. That's what we like to that's yep. what we like to talk about, but like I had a feeling that maybe it wasn't like that, that maybe everyone was trying to stay in line, but I, there is no way I can believe that. I can know I cannot believe that there is calm underneath the surface behind, no. behind closed doors. I do think there's a lot of scrambling and it's not necessarily scrambling all to leave, but there's gotta be a lot of scrambling of how do we save ourselves? Mm. And now I'm sure they're looking at all avenues of save ourselves through the Pac-12, save right. ourselves through another conference, right. save ourselves through this and that. Um, I so I, I do think because I think there's there's a lot of steam picking up behind. Well, hey, there's one more fully guaranteed pro rata slot for the Big 12. Yep. Fox is holding up the other two, but Fox isn't necessarily not going to to get to chip in full shares to teams 15 and 16 if they know who those teams are going to be. Right, yeah, and that's something that Brett McMurphy addressed with us on Friday as well. He, he said that ESPN is required to pay its full amount, the $20 million per school, uh, to the newcomers. Fox is not required to contract and match the $12 million, uh, but they have a verbal agreement to where up to two they can. Uh, that means Colorado, when they come in, they are getting the full $31.7 million, the pro rata. Mm -hmm. uh, but each team... Let's see. But for the league to reach 16 teams, we need to we need assurances from Fox that they would pay their full shares for two additional members. So uh, right now, I think that brings to the, the situation ahead where you're looking at it's one team for sure the Big 12 is going to add. And, and I think the wording behind that, too, is like when you see we can add one, we're guaranteed to add one. What you're not saying is there's no cap on that, right? Like we can add one. But that's not saying we can't add two. That's not yeah. saying we can't add three. It's just letting you know for sure one's about to go down. Yeah, I, I think it is a guarantee that Big 12 will be at 14 for 2024. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I feel very good about that. I feel bad for the Pac-12 about that because there is nowhere else that team is coming from unless somehow your mark turns all of the Big 12 around on UConn. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure all the Big 12 is like, they'll be there. Don't yeah, that, uh, that's another we, – we can get into UConn in a minute because yeah. I, I do think right now uh, the Pac-12 is definitely on deck. And I think 
all indications, and I, if I'm wrong, cool, but I, I'm not the only person that's about to say this. It's Arizona, right? Like, Arizona is on the clock. They have Absolutely. been there with Colorado Honestly, step by step. To use the baseball reference, I don't think they're on deck. I think they're at the plate. They, they, damn well, they damn well should be. And I think if you go back, Max Olson we had on as well. Uh, he interviewed Robert Robbins uh, from Arizona. He said what everybody has been saying this entire time, what Colorado was saying up until they finally left, which is we still got a year left on the contract. We're, it's no need to get panicky and jump. We're still in. We're, we're still believing in the pack. We want to see the TV deal. Yeah, there, that's cool. There are multiple ways you can look that's at cool. that. You can look at it like their heads in the sand. They're really just trucking along with the pack. You can look at it like he's just trying to keep everything calm, keep the pack as stable as it can be to, to get two good options. Yeah, or two two options in front of him instead of keeping one unstable. Kind of like frankly, like Colorado did, yep. um, where they almost made their own bed of like, well, there's no deal. It, it's because you're flirting so hard with the Big 12 that right. like, it's tough to make that Pac-12 deal. So maybe he's trying to get both deals in front of him, like actually get a number, and he's still waiting for that. Or it's just a flat-up facade, straight-up facade where he's really like, everything behind closed doors is like, get me into the Big 12 ASAP. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Like, honestly, I <laughs> it's just reckless speculation. But what I do think is interesting, what I want to go back to on the pro rata, um, is even though it's only guaranteed up to that 14th team, one more team, uh, Fox is in a very enviable situation of being able to sit there and kind of be the deciding vote on, like, are they good enough right. to make it into the Big 12? It's not a position that I think Big 12 presidents or, or ADs would love mm -hmm. that a TV network gets to really be the deciding vote. But look, I wouldn't be surprised if Fox is maybe holding out for Oregon and Washington as 15 and 16 rather than Arizona state and Utah. Well, I think that's only the, the, but, the most, most logical business decision. Yes. It's the most logical business decision, but I, I also wouldn't be surprised if Arizona state and, and Utah get their ducks in a row and they force Fox to make that decision. And Fox is like, you know what? You're good enough. Because Utah is a power football program. We keep talking about this. Oh, yeah. They get it done on the field. Arizona State, massive alumni base. We both think they're very much a sleeping I, giant. In, I think Kenny Dillingham can turn it around. And so I think it would be premature Fox to just say, nee. but again, I assume they've done the research. I assume they have some consultants and perhaps they're already they already firmly know like these are the schools we take these are the schools we don't but i think the key is that oregon and washington need to not be that 14th team right i think that's the road to 16 is one of the other three corners is that 14th no i think it is too and i think at this point it's going to be arizona i think that it, it is it's going to be interesting to see how everything progresses throughout the week because you're already starting to hear like they're, they're, people are trying to spin this and throw the ACC in the mix. You're starting to hear, well, what could be, what could have, would have, should have, and all this. I, I think you're going to see a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of distractions um, this week that are going to bring up just probably some absurd speculation. But you need to just be level-headed. Uh, I think by the end of the week, Arizona, will we will find something coming out of Tucson, whether they're making that a decision or not. I think this gives George Klyavkov and uh, the pack a nut some more time to that, giving them the benefit of the doubt, right? Like you've had this long, you've, you couldn't pull it off in a year. Here's another week. We need to know something. Uh, and I think that by probably Thursday or Friday, we'll have a good indication of may and I, I maybe like I don't want to put dates on it. I'm saying I'm oh, hopeful. I was about to ask if you want to bet. I am hopeful that by the end of the week, Thursday or Friday, we have something. I don't want to be that guy that says this date or not. Okay, because I was going to ask if you want to bet Monday's lunch on it. Ooh. I will buy you lunch on Monday if, you know they're, what? if they're in by the end of the 3 to 6 show on Friday. I will if, take that bet. You know what? Because I'm hungry. I will take that bet right now. We're going to go with that. And I, hey, you want? <laughs> if I'll be the guy with the date that you can shoot down, cool. We can run Friday, with that. Friday. When they go off air. When they go off air. If we don't any, have something. Any, any team. Any team. Any I don't team. care who it is. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, no, that. I do care who it is because I do not want you. <laughs> like, okay. Look, I think yeah, obviously. Yeah, let's, let's really dig into you.